Cool. Well, welcome to the bio creation workshop. I am so excited to see some new faces here. I am Jules and uh, I'm not going to go a lot into necessarily my who I am, but I have been on the consciousness path for over 30 years. I was lucky enough when I was about 16 years old to have someone come into my life that recognized my gift of seeing frequency or the ability to read frequency. And I've had some very high level healers right away in my journey that has brought me here. Uh, one of my passions has always been healing. And I would say that that's been my focus for a really, really long time. And in 2013, I had a severe spine injury and uh, went through a lot with that. And I ended up healing myself instantly by moving into healing on a cellular level. So I went from reprogramming the mind through using frequency to reprogramming on a cellular level. And what I found with that is that it happens so much faster when we start to reprogram on a cellular level. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. We're actually going to reprogram ourselves today. And we're also going to tap into your intention. That, so that's kind of where I want to start first is to have, hopefully you came with an intention. And if not, I'm going to guess it's not going to be too hard to just grab hold of one because you'll want to kind of hold that intention as we go through the workshop. And then when we do some DQ healing, we'll allow you to kind of bring that intention into the process itself. The first thing I want to talk about is why we re reprogram on a cellular level versus through the brain. I think a lot of people out there are reprogramming through the brain and it works. Don't get me wrong. It does work. But it works so much better when we program on a cellular level. And I'm going to show you why. Science is now showing that consciousness isn't necessarily in the brain, that consciousness is something that's our whole experience. You could say it's a whole body experience, but I think that most people will agree that the consciousness exists within the body. So it's not just within the mind. Why we feel like it's in the mind is because our mind programs repeated thoughts or it kind of stores our history. That's what I call our filing cabinet that we'll kind of dive back into in order to take out information in order to connect to our reality. Sometimes this is done subconsciously. Sometimes this is just the way that we're programmed to exist. And then sometimes we do it consciously because we have a hard time not identifying in new things. When we start to reprogram, I'm going to put everybody on mute. And if you want to talk, I'll just let you unmute yourself. Um, but this way we won't have some background noise and that sort of thing. Let me go back to where I was. When we reprogram on a cellular level, this is the easiest way that I can describe it is it's like having two different houses. And if you think about right now, you're most likely in a house or some sort of environment. And whatever frequency your environment is, is the frequency that you're feeling as you continue to exist in that environment. A way that you can kind of, Kathy, will you just um, watch the people? I'm kind of admitting them, but if you don't mind kind of watching that so I can focus on what I'm saying. Thank you, honey. Um, so you can imagine uh, even just saying you're go you go to a party and you walk into the party and it's really uplifting and people are excited and people are talking about evolving and uh, all these things that they're manifesting or creating. And by the end of the party, you feel pumped, right? Or you had this experience when you go to a conference and you're around a lot of people that are gearing up to create a new business or uh, make a lot of money, whatever it is, you, you've all probably had that experience. That environment is the same as your body. Your body is the environment of your consciousness. 
So when you reprogram your cells to hold identities at a higher level, it attunes your body to match that frequency. That frequency then is the very environment that your consciousness is existing in. So we don't, we can actually bypass limited programming because the very environment that we're, our consciousness is existing in is supporting our evolution. So hold that in mind as we kind of continue to go on this path. Now going back to what your intention is, because the next step of manifesting is knowing right now how your cells are actually being programmed. I would say that this, what I'm about to tell you, is probably the biggest shift that you're going to walk away with today. Because everything out there is giving you information from a space of duality. When we are looking to manifest something by looking into our environment or connecting to a frequency that already exists, we are trying to create new form with form. This is true even for your thoughts because your thoughts are form unless they're coming from an intelligence outside of your mind. And we can talk a little bit about that, but in the training that I do, I teach you your level of intuitive powers. And those levels of intuitive powers are teaching you how to tap into an intelligence of a frequency outside of your mind. And at the highest level, which I'm going to show you here in a little bit, at the fifth level of consciousness, and even on the fourth level of consciousness, it's the ability to bring in information outside of your programming. Because we are programmed to exist in duality or in reflection, your cells right now are being programmed by your environment. And now we're going to take it out of just the body and the mind and the programmed mind and into the collective. You are bypassing programming of the collective because you are in reflection of what is real and what is not. And you're consciously choosing belief systems or unconsciously choosing belief systems that are creating the reality that you're existing in right now. When we start to reprogram on a cellular level, we are tapping into an intelligence that is already inside of you. One of my favorite things to say when people start listening to me talk is don't try to understand this with your intellect. Allow yourself to just feel into what is being said and remember, because everything that I'm saying you already know on an innate level, because it's already programmed in your cellular makeup to exist at the highest frequency and to use that frequency as an intelligence to step into your highest potential. Did you? That was weird. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> right now, I think most people know that we are only using about 10% of our brain. Well, the same is true for our body. You'll hear people say that we have that junk DNA or the DNA that's not really doing anything. You guys, every single part of you has a purpose. Just because science hasn't caught up to what that purpose is, doesn't mean that you don't have the ability to start tapping into it right now. When you start to reprogram on a cellular level, you're teaching your body to be in the expression of that intelligence. Now I want you to see the difference between expression and reflection. Expression is the ability to exist in a frequency that has an intelligence without going into your environment to find truth. It's a truth that you already have. When we are trying to manifest from the space of expression, we are bypassing programming. We are bypassing the need for outcome. <laughs> I can tell you outcome and evidence is, the, your, is not your friend. 
when you are trying to manifest. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. I want you to see reflection as duality. And I want you to see expression as the ability to hold a frequency of your truth without needing something in your envi environment to tell you that it's true. It's just true to you. You're not looking for people to agree with you. You're not looking for people to be on your side. You're not looking for evidence and you're not looking for outcome. You are just in the expression of the frequency of what it is that you want to manifest. Every single time that we go into our, uh, into our environment through reflection and we are looking for evidence, you can see it like planting a seed and the seed is planted and you're waiting for it to grow. Every time that you go and look for evidence, you're basically un like digging up that seed to see if it started growing yet. Well, you can imagine how much longer it's going to take for that seed to actually break the surface than if you just let it alone and let it do what it's supposed to do and then finally break the surface. That underneath piece is what I call abstract frequency because we can't see it yet. Once it breaks the surface, we call it form because it started to create form. What we teach you is how to actually hold a level of consciousness in abstract frequency so that you can allow the frequency to show itself before you go looking for evidence and it can break the surface so much faster. Before I move on, I just have to say, I love questions. It's one of my favorite ways of teaching workshops because the reflection through those questions allows more clarity to come in. So before I go into the five levels of consciousness, and how we can connect this to reprogramming cells. I wanna open it up to any questions. Even just raise your hand or unmute yourself. Hi, Cole. Hello, sorry if there's noise around. Um, okay, I think I'm an astrologer and I've been thinking about a lot. Um, my moon is in Scorpio, which is water. And over the time through all my relationships, I've kind of come to this realization that someone with a moon in Taurus really works for me because they soak up my water and in turn I, I water their earth. So that's kind of how it works with the elements in astrology, right? And the, the moon is about your emotions. It's the mother, the nurturer. Um, so you just were talking about the seed and the planting of the seed and then the watering and then how you can speed that up. So for instance, if I know someone who I sort of fancy and I know their moon is in Taurus, how would I go about creating that, that dynamic between the dualism, uh, the, the, the astrology chart, which I believe is, a, is an imprinted code? Um, that oh, we I'm going to stop you right there, Cole. I'm going to stop you right there. Yeah. Okay, so you're the perfect example of somebody that just went into something that's already been created to find your truth. So you've looked at an astrology chart and what other people have said, and that this is this, and then this is what works best. Everything, all of the information that you have just spoken from is from information that you have received from something that's already been created in form. What I'm going to have you do is turn that inside out. <laughs> Tap into your divine technology, program your cell to hold the frequency of your intention and bypass form altogether. Because at the most advanced level of human, the human existence, you guys, we are, we're only using 10% of the electric responses of intelligence right now. 10%. Okay. And that 10% is programmed to exist in a reality of duality. What we have the ability to do is turn that inside out, turn on the technology of our DNA and move into the expression of 100% potential of human form. In that space, we are in creation. We are both the creator 
and the creation at the same time. We aren't looking into astrology to find out who we are and who we're best matched with and when's the best time to manifest because at the at the truth is that there's nothing actually even outside of ourselves if we are truly in flow with the universe then we are in the creation of the universe i call this the divine design it's the ability to tap into the divine matrix and you just move through it at that space, we are not looking outside of ourselves to be told who we are or when to do things or especially who are, should and shouldn't have a relationship. So I'm going to have you hold on to that Cole, for just a minute. I'm going to move into the five levels of consciousness, and then we're going to do a DQ session. I'm going to attune you to the frequency of your intention. And I'm going to have you bring your consciousness into that frequency so that you can go into the expression of expression of the intelligence it holds. Then we'll open it up um, to more questions. But does anybody else have a question about what I've said so far before we move on? Thank you for that, Cole. Okay, so I want to go, I'm going to pin myself to the top so you can see my, my whiteboard here because I love my whiteboard. Okay, so this is the five levels of consciousness. And I'm gonna show you why most people have a hard time manifesting or it takes a really long time. Knowing what level of consciousness that you're creating from is the biggest awareness that I'd love for you to take away from this besides identifying when you're looking in your environment for information and when you're tapping into your cellular DNA and moving into divine expression of that DNA in order to know what it is that you're in creation of. There's a difference. The first level of consciousness is just being unconscious. I think we all can know that. And we all are going to have different awakenings. This isn't just the one awakening where we go from being unconscious and then all of a sudden we're conscious. This is being aware of limiting beliefs and in that awareness that we wake up from a belief that we didn't know that we were existing in. This is actually one of my favorite ones to go from here to here is so much fun because it's when we start to identify what our limiting beliefs are or what we're looking at in our environment and we're agreeing to can get really, really fun once we kind of get out of the way that seeing things about what we have believed in is a bad thing. <laughs> because then once we have the choice, we can start to change anything. And I call this starting to gamify reality because we don't have to be in any one reality if we choose not to. So from here to here is that awareness piece. Awareness is our is our friend. We want to be aware. So the more that we can be aware of what we're choosing, the better off that we're going to be, because once we have choice, we can change reality. Of course, the second level is waking up to limiting beliefs. That's when we see something that we've agreed to is limiting the experience that we're having. Once we wake up from here is when we move into the third level of consciousness where we actually have a choice of what we want to do with the information that we just woke up to. <laughs> and for most of us, this is where we actually get stuck is in the third level of consciousness, because once we have the choice of. I'm just trying to think. I, Let's just say that I want to make, I, I love using money because money is so easy to put frequency to because $5 has a different frequency than $100. $1,000 has a different frequency than $10,000. So let's say you, you wake up to the fact that, oh, I actually don't have to live in a reality where I'm making $3,000 a month. And you see what the limiting belief was there. So let's say it's that I can't leave my job because I have a family to support. And that you see that that's a limiting belief and you decide, all right, I'm not going to believe that anymore. And I'm going to move into a reality where I can actually live my dream and still be supportive to my family. So once you get here, most people will go and try to make that happen. So they will uh, move into the space of like, like, this is also where the law of attraction is. 
the law of attraction is actually in the third level of consciousness unless you've learned to master existing in abstract frequency. The law of attraction is created from the part of you that has moved into observation, but is still observ observing what it is it's observing from the same frequency. So I'm gonna show you this. So let's say you woke up and you're here, and then you move into the third level of consciousness. And this part of you is saying, oh, I don't have to exist in this reality anymore. And so it starts to identify all of the parts that have created a reality that's not true. So this person, this part of your mind, they call it the observer mind, is observing another part of the mind. But it never actually moved out of the frequency to where it's observing. I like to call this the ego observing the ego. And most people get stuck here because they feel as though they're in the observer mind and that from that space, they should be able to create something different, but they never actually moved out of the frequency of the experience that they're in. They may be able to call in something that they, an intention that has a higher frequency, but they're still seeing that intention from the frequency that came from the observation itself. I call this trying to create form with form because it's really the ego mind that is trying to create the new intention. And if the ego mind or your programming is trying to create an intention, you're going to get more of what you have. It's very, very difficult to create something new from the frequency or from your programmed mind. And you can imagine why your mind is programmed to create more of what it has. To move into the higher level of what I call abstract frequency is the ability to actually go from the observer mind to another place of observation. And I call this like the, the super subconscious, you could say, or the super conscious, I should say. And it has the ability to look at both of the other spaces of observation, meaning you're able to observe the ego mind wanting to create as the observer and the part of you that's actually programmed. To move out of this, from the, why the law of attraction, you kind of get stuck here, is because the part of you that wants to manifest that new job and, and still be able to support the family was coming from the ego mind or the program mind. It's creating form with form. It's trying to make it happen. You haven't actually invited in a new frequency yet. You may have an intention at a higher frequency. You can see the difference. Let's say you're making $5,000 a month and you wanna to go to $10,000 a month. There's a frequency gap here. All of this space in between here is the abstract frequency. Being able to hold your consciousness in abstract frequency it what is what actually will bring you to the reality of here. I call this the one to 10 method. This is the ability to move into consciousness of an intelligence outside of your programming. We have something that we call the one to 10 method, and that is the ability to do just this. You can bypass all of the programming that you have and just move into the frequency of your intention without having to go through all of the programming. You'll hear people say a lot of times, well, I have to clear this and I have to do this and you can do that. But once we are aware, we have the ability to go from the second level of consciousness to the fourth or fifth level of consciousness almost instantly if we can, if we have the tools to actually stay in abstract frequency. Let me look at this and make sure I got everything. I want to open it up to questions with the five levels of consciousness, just because this part is super important. And then we'll move into reprogramming the cells. Does anybody have any questions about the five levels of consciousness? How many people feel as though they have experienced trying to make it happen? 
How many people have manifested from co-creation? How many people just have no idea? <laughs> How many people are like, I don't even know what to say right now. And that's okay. That's okay. Because I, I, I would rather you have no idea what I'm talking about, honestly, right now, than to feel like you have it all figured out. Because there's another part that another saying I love to say, and is that the intellect will never take you there. We can know things on an intellectual level, but unless our body is actually holding that intelligence, we'll never get anywhere. And that's where so many people get stuck is that they feel like if they understand something that they're going to be able to change. The one thing that keeps most people from changing is the ability, is that their inability to shift identity. And this is another reason why we want to reprogram on a cellular level. Because when we reprogram a cell to let's say identifying at $5,000 a month <laughs> to $10,000 a month, that, that cell, Bruce Lipton has this saying that your cells are like little soldiers that are waiting to be told what to do. I don't know if you guys have ever heard that, but I think a lot of people have. And when we are reprogramming the cell to hold a frequency of $10,000 a month, that cell is going to hold the frequency of $10,000 a month. Well, look what just happened. The cell shifted identity from making $5,000 a month to $10,000 a month instantly just by doing a DQ process. When we start to do this daily and we continue to shift what the frequencies of our cells, we are also teaching the very environment that our consciousness is in to also shift identity. And identity is the one space that we most often get held up in and are unable to change because we identify with who we are in the frequency of what we're creating right now. And to start identifying, so if you're identifying in the reality of $5,000 a month and you're trying to shift to $10,000 a month, you have to be able to identify in that frequency. Well, if you don't know that frequency, it's super hard to hold it. So if we are reprogramming the very environment that your consciousness is in to $10,000 a month, part of you is already identifying in that. And that's the part of you that knows how to hold expression and not reflection. Expression gets you to a place of manifesting 10 times as fast than for your mind to do it. So you may think, oh, I'm not doing anything. And then all of a sudden your consciousness actually hits the frequency that your body is holding of $10,000 a month. And you realize that whole entire time you were in creation of the $10,000 a month and then boom, they meet and you see that you're already existing in that reality. And that is one of the coolest things to have happen. And I think a lot of people here on the call have had some sort of experience like that because it works. And I can say my experience of my personal life is that it works very, very fast. And the more that we master it, the quicker it goes. Okay, before we do a process, does anybody have any questions that they wanna ask? Yeah, go ahead, Miranda. Um, so I have done, co like I've done manifesting through co-creation, um, which, which was really great. But what I noticed is I was only able to really manifest half of what I wanted. Like there's always something that I didn't get, but I, I got, I got part of it. Okay. So I'm curious about that. Yeah. All right. So I actually, I will reflect a couple of things on that. To be in co-creation is the ability to stay in creation, you guys. So the co-creation part is, is when, so co-creation is getting a hit, do this. Going into creation is taking that hit and then pushing it out into the universe and creating what that hit was. 
if we're trying to manifest from the ego mind, we're still in the place where we're looking for outcome. And there's nothing wrong with that, honey. There's nothing wrong with that. We can play in those realms, but we're not going to move into 100% potential. We won't hit the miracle pattern from that place. We can try. We can, we can keep doing it and playing in that energy because it's still fun. I mean, it's fun to have a, like an intention and manifest it. That's why we teach soft intention. And I, and again, I'll go back to using money because money has, it's just, it's like, it's this or this, there's not, there's, it's two different frequencies. So let's say our intention is I want $10,000 a month. A soft intention is to allow yourself to attune to that frequency, move into that frequency by using the tools and attuning your body to that frequency. And then you start to have conscious thoughts around what is my next step. When we have an intention and we put things like, I wanna make $10,000 a month. I never wanna leave my house. I don't wanna to have to talk to anybody. Then all of a sudden we've created that intention from the ego mind. It's very unlikely that we're going to have that happen <laughs> because we're, we created it from a space of our programming and our fear. I love it to take when people go into having their intention to just take a few minutes to find out what's behind that intention. So if it's going from $5,000 to $10,000 a month, yeah, we could stop there. But what if we actually took it a step further and asked, where is that, where is that intention actually coming from? Because if it's coming from my fear that if I'm not making $10,000 a month, that I'm going to be stuff, I'm going to suffer, that my family's going to suffer, that I'm going to end up on the street. I'll never be able to leave my husband. I mean, put whatever it is that you want to put there. Then we've just created another intention from our ego from our programming, from primal response. It's really important to know where is this intention coming from? If the intention is coming from a space where we wanna create an emotion, let's be clear on what that emotion is. If I make $10,000 a month, I'm gonna feel free. Don't stop there, you guys, because what in your life is making you not feel free right now? Because again, if you're saying, I want to make $10,000 a month so that I can feel free, that part of you that wants to feel free is still identifying in the part of you that feels stuck and that feels as though I can't be free unless I have this. It's still coming from the program mind. We can use the program mind to create intention. Don't get me wrong. But being really clear and honest about where that intention is coming from will get you so much further. Because then when the ego mind wants to come in and attach all these little things like, well, I never want to talk to people. I never want to leave my house. I want to only work two hours a week. Mm -hmm. Then we know all of a sudden that we're in our programming. And then we have to go back and go through all these levels here. When we can create an intention and it's at a higher frequency than we're at now, that's the whole purpose of having an intention, you guys, is that you call in a frequency that's higher than the frequency that you're in now. And that frequency has an intelligence outside of your programming. That's how we use intention. And whatever comes from that intelligence is going to take us so much farther than our ego mind could because your ego mind is actually limited to form, meaning it's limited with, to what you've already experienced in some way. Does everybody understand that? Go ahead, Jennifer. So could you give an example of what, if it's not to manifest $15,000 in the emotion of freedom, what would be the higher frequency intention? Or something like that. Oh, don't get me wrong. It's okay to say freedom, but just be really clear about what's underneath that freedom. I'm all about when we, anytime we want to bring in intention, the more conscious we can be 
around what we're actually asking, the better. So if you did want to take it a step further and you knew that you were acting, you were saying freedom because you were feeling stuck, then be conscious about that. And so what does it mean to be stuck? Well, if I'm stuck, then I'm this. And then if I'm this, then what? Because most often what you're going to find is it's going to go down to a primal level where it's, you want to feel safe. Mm -hmm. You want to feel loved. You want to feel just those, you know, really primal levels, like, because safety and love are actually really close in the same frequency, because when we were infants and, or if we weren't loved, we probably weren't going to survive. If you really think about it. So those are both at a primal level when we go into this frequency of safety. So then it may be, okay, well, if I really know I want to make $10,000 a month or 15,000 in your case, and I want to have freedom, but I know it's coming from this place that I want to feel safe. What am I really asking? My intention is that I trust in an intelligence outside of myself to manifest my best life. That's where I would go with it because then I keep it open to the experience of the magic that is so beyond my mind that why would we limit ourselves at 15,000? Because to truly step into that frequency, you're opening up yourself to ultimate abundance. But we can, we can start with that. So it's ultimate trust in the divine too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's the ability to trust in an intelligence that's not our programmed mind. So whatever label you want to put that if it's I love to use the word divine intelligence because we have divine technology. It's that it's the technology that's in every single one of us. That is our birthright. It's there re what, ready to turn on. We're only using 10% of it right now. Crazy to think what human potential we can tap into. Gabriella. Um, Rosemary's put a couple of um, comments in there. Thank you for that. All right, Rosemary, let's see. These five levels are all held in the body's programming. Absolutely not. So the first, the last two, I guess what I'm asking, does it go into ancestral? Okay, so um, thank you for this question. The fifth, fourth and fifth level of consciousness is not as you could say it's in our divine technology. So just to define what is divine technology, you guys, your DNA has, you know, that you have a, a chemical that's released when you're born and when you die called DMT. Download molecular technology. <laughs> All right. So when you, when that chemical is released in your body, it comes in on a frequency and it downloads in your DNA, your unique divine expression. It has the ability to tap into a hundred percent potential of what I don't even want to say we're human at that point, because to actually go into 100% potential, we're not going to identify as human anymore. We're going to be something much bigger than that. When you die, DMT is released again, and it's downloading that technology back into your spirit or your consciousness that actually moves on so that you are always connected to the purest essence of the intelligence that you hold. You can say that's divine intelligence, universal intelligence. It's that intelligence that is connected in all things. This is the one is oneness. Okay. And we all have the ability to be in that, the expression of this intelligence. It is intelligent. Once you actually activate that intelligence to a hundred percent potential, you don't have to be conscious anymore. There's nothing to be conscious of because you're perfect you just express intelligence. Make sense? Okay, so now with Rosemary's question, these two levels of consciousness right here is the ability to start to tap into that intelligence and then be an expression. At that point, you are not in the programming of your cells. Your cells are programmed just like your mind is. They're the same reflection because it's all connected. 
All right, that was an awesome question. All right, I wanna watch the time because I do want to do um, a DQ process. And so I'm gonna do a kind of just a group one so that everybody can use their intention, but I'm gonna do the universal, oh, hold on, we got one more question. Um, how do you know when to adjust your frequency if you don't use reflection? What, oh, I love this question. See, I love you guys, I love questions. All right, so there's a difference between reflection and divine reflection, because you're right, we do use reflection, but we use reflection to give us information, not to identify in. So when we're manifesting and we're using reflection to find out whether or not it's working, we've moved into our programming. We're looking for something that's already been created in form because the part of us that's actually looking for evidence is coming from the frequency that we're trying to move out of. And when we do that, we start to create form from the frequency that we're already in. I call it form creating with form. You've moved into the third level of consciousness. When you're in the fourth level of consciousness, when you're in co-creation, when you get the download and then it says, go do this. And so you start setting up a website and you set up this and you make these phone calls and you're in the creation of whatever your next right step is. Well, what happens is a lot of times you're going to step out of that creation. And as soon as you step out of the creation, we want to be really mindful about what we're doing here. Because if we stay here too long, the ego mind is going to come in and start to judge what it is that's being created. This is when, let's say you start something and you're in it, you're just, you're in creation, in creation, in creation. And then all of a sudden you step out of the creation and you're like, holy cow, what am I doing? Like, I just invested all this money or I invested all this time and oh my gosh, it's not working because you're looking for the evidence for it to work. And then all of a sudden you've, boom, lost the frequency of the creation itself moved into the frequency of the program mind that's looking for evidence through fear and you just created an interruption or interference in what's being created that's how most people use reflection but there's another way of reflecting called divine reflection i call this the one to the two to the three to the one so that's the ability for you to be here and then having a reflection come in but the reflection is showing you a frequency that you weren't able to see on your own. So it's not a frequency of your programmed mind. It was a frequency that you weren't seeing without reflection. All of a sudden what happens when that happens is that the reflection moves up into an even higher frequency of creation and you've created something that wasn't there before. That's using divine reflection. And that is, the, that is what we all will do until we actually move into oneness is we have the ability to use reflection to see something in the abstract or in that divine intelligence that we weren't able to see without it. And when that happens, I, that's why I call it the one, two, three, two to three. So it's here you are, then all of a sudden a frequency comes in and says, hey, look at that. And you're like, holy cow, that is the coolest thing. I didn't even see that before. All of a sudden they meet together and they create a tipping point where they created a frequency of oneness. That means the reflection moves back into oneness and then it moves into the creation of that frequency. But the reflection needed to be there first. I hope that helps, Joanna. Um, did that answer your question? You can put it in the chat if you'd like. Yes, yay, okay. Okay, so now I want you to go back to your intention. And we're gonna do a universal DQ process. So whatever comes through, I'm just reading the energy of, of all of you. And we'll do it through the universal master cell, meaning we're doing this on a universal level, because the truth is we all have very similar programming, you guys. We live within the matrix. And until we break the matrix, which is what we're doing right now, and we actually have the ability to move outside of even the observer mind 
to this higher space where we can start to gamify reality, we are holding program of the matrix. Even when we're able to do this, we're still within the matrix, but at that point we're gamifying it. And that's when life gets really, really, really fun because there is nothing more fun than to see the coolest movie that has ever been created and be that close to its creation. It's a lot of fun. Go ahead and shut your eyes. Place your hands on your heart if you would like, just get comfortable. And before we even start, I want you to place your intention in your heart space. And then I want you to just let it go. The soft intention. And we're just going to inform and infuse this space with the divine frequency, universal frequency, whatever word feels right for you. And we'll start by breathing in a white blue light in through the nose, allowing it to trace along the brain, moving down through the spine and out through the mouth. We're just attuning the spinal fluid. This is the fluid that regulates the frequency of your body. It's the fluid that your brain floats in. Just raising the frequency. You may feel that as it comes in. And I'm just gonna be moving into the center of the physical brain, into the universal master cell. This is the cell that holds all programming of the collective. And we're just gonna clear out the limiting beliefs that are holding you back from bringing your intention into its highest potential and then into probability. Give me one moment. So we're gonna clear, cancel, and delete. If I don't know how, I can't do it. If I don't have the step-by-step, -step, I don't know how to take the first step. If I don't know the outcome, I'm too afraid to move forward. We're gonna clear, cancel, and delete. It didn't work for me in the past, so it won't work for me now. We're gonna clear, cancel, and delete the fear of failure, being humiliated. Give me one moment. We're gonna clear, cancel, and delete the fear of suffering. We're gonna bring in the seven elements these are seven frequencies of consciousness to clear the cell on all levels, bringing it to a neutral space. We're gonna allow the technology to activate in the frequency of your intention. So what you can do is see a beautiful white blue light in the center of your mind your physical brain. And if you can't see it, just allow yourself to feel it, hear it. I don't care. Just have the experience. And if you don't feel anything, that's okay too. It's still happening. And once you have that white blue light in the center of your mind, I want you to expand it to encompass your entire brain. And this light holds the intelligence of your intention. It is filling the cell, it's filling your mind, it's moving into the spinal fluid and just allowing yourself to have the experience of that frequency. And now I want you to bring your conscious mind into that light. This is with intention, just bringing the conscious mind into the light. And again, allowing it to expand 
and encompass the entire mind. And just see how long you can hold your consciousness in this light without moving back into thought or naming the experience. We're attuning your consciousness to the frequency of your intention. And this frequency has an intelligence. It's okay if you don't consciously understand it, just know that it's happening. And then from this space, saying silently to yourself, I am the creator and the creation. From this space, I cannot fail. My body knows what it feels like to hold the frequency of my intention until my conscious mind can meet it. Just letting that download into every cell of your body as you move into the expression of this beautiful technology that has been turned on. And then just taking in one more deep breath. Oh no. And say, thank you. I love you. It is done. Okay, so from this place, how's everybody feeling, first of all? Does everybody feel the frequency shift after doing that? Feels really good, doesn't it? So now what you can do to play in is asking yourself, if I am truly the creator and the creation, like there is no separation between those two what action steps am I going to be taking right now to move into the reality of my intention and being willing to listen to what that information is telling you because you just consciously connected to an intelligence that is outside of the programming of your mind and will guide you to places that are so unimaginable right now, if you allow it to. So what I wanna invite you into next is, if this is lit you up in any way, and you just want more, and you want to, to speak with one of our manifest coaches and have some more of your questions answered, attuned to your intention a little bit more, find out about what all we're doing, you can sign up for a one-on-one -on -one call. I'm going to put the link for that in the chat. It's free. And um, pretty sure you can get in within the next couple of days. Uh, but really, I want you to stay in the frequency of th this right now. Because what you're experiencing right now is only the beginning, you guys. It's only the beginning of where all of this is going. And I see some similar, like some faces out there that have uh, taken some of my courses and have taken the journey that uh, we invite you into if this is feeling like something that you want to self-discover in. And I, it was one of those things where we're doing it. We're literally breaking what it is to be human, you guys. And this isn't just your normal class, <laughs> what we're inviting you into. This is going to change the rest of your life. And I like to even say, this will be the last class you'll ever take because it will give you all of the tools that you need to exist as the creation itself. It, it truly does. And, um, and I'm just getting chills on that because this isn't about me. And that's one of my favorite things too. It's just not about us, you guys. Like we're here to do something that is, is bigger than what we can 
can connect to right now. It just is true. Like our little brains can only take in so much, but there's a whole nother part of our experience that's ready to expand into unlimited potential. But the one thing with potential is that action actually has to happen. We don't go anywhere by just holding potential. We go places when we take potential and put it into action. So with that, does anybody have any questions before we get off? So the chat for that to do a one-on-one -on -one with a manifest coach is in the, did I just say that, is in the chat. I think I said that twice. <laughs> Um, but I do want to uh, just have a few minutes to, we have a, about four minutes if you would like to have any other questions answered before we get off. Or is there any feedback or reflection? You guys are so quiet. I, I just have a technical question. I could see the chat preview a minute ago, but now it went away. Oh, did it? Here, I can do it again. Um, how's that? Ah, there it is. Okay, Thank perfect. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you. All right. Well, I just want to send you all just so much love. Abriana, did you have a question? Or were you just, every time I see that, I'm like, <laughs> we have one of our soul family, his name's Joshua. And every time he has a question, he goes, he does this. <laughs> so anytime I see somebody do that, I think they have a question. All right, my lovelies. Well, enjoy this frequency. Go and step into exploring your highest potential in any way. And if we can do anything to support you in that space, please reach out. And if not, this has just been so much fun holding this space with you. And we hope to see you in some of our other live events that are free. You can go to activateevolution.com and see all the different ways that we have to play because that's what this is all about is having fun and self-exploration. All right, big hugs, lots of love to everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jules. Bye, bye.